seems like every year now, there is some sort of devastating, epic, and downright ugly Packers offensive meltdown. One of the best offenses in the league, with one of, if not the NFL's best quarterback, will suddenly, out of nowhere, look like they can't get out of their own way. Ever since Matt LaFleur took the reins as head coach, one of these terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days has happened in each year of his tenure. In 2019, the 49ers obliterated them 37-8, with Rodgers throwing for only 104 yards on 33 attempts. Then in 2020, the Bucks shocked them 38-10, intercepting Rodgers twice and limiting him to 160 yards and just a 45% completion rate. While the Packers have still gone to the NFC Championship in each of those respective seasons, the 38-3 beatdown from the Saints this past Sunday was particularly brutal. Yeah, the defense has been suspect for years, and despite their incredible talent, they still got absolutely steamrolled. But Rodgers' 36 quarterback rating was the fourth worst of his career, and he just didn't look like himself at all. This begs the question, were the issues more his fault or more schematic? And the answer leans towards the latter. Let me explain what I mean. Last season, one of the biggest keys to the Packers' number one ranked offense was their ability to execute on first and second down, which helped them either avoid third down altogether or create more manageable third downs, which of course are easier to convert. In 2020, they converted a league-leading 51% of their third downs to consistently extend drives, but against the Saints, they converted only 1 for 10, 10%, which even though it's just one week, was dead last in the NFL. There were a lot of little things the Saints did to stymie the Packers' early down run game, like stacking the line with bare fronts to mitigate double teams and setting a hard edge to force Aaron Jones inside, and using patience and power on the defensive line to dominate the Packers' front and not allow them to gain any ground whatsoever. Still, last year when the Packers had issues running the ball in these early downs, they had plenty of different ways they could easily generate offense. Teams were so scared of Devontae Adams or guys like MVS beating them deep, LaFleur always had a few tricks up his sleeve to gain easy 5-7 yard chunks through the air. However, the Saints had an answer for all of those. They developed a plan to defend the foundation of the Packers offense, which is based on the zone running game with split zone action, meaning the tight end comes across to the backside of the formation to kick out the end man on the line of scrimmage to create a potential cutback lane for the back. The reason LaFleur's system has been so effective is that the play-action concepts they run off this split-zone action can be really hard to defend. Usually, the linebacker who's responsible for the tight end in man coverage has to also read his gap in the run game, and by the time he deciphers its play-action, the tight end has tons of separation. So to counter this type of action, the Saints banjoed the running back and tight end, which means both linebackers were responsible for a side instead of a man. To give Zach Bond a better angle and better leverage, defensive end Marcus Davenport was coached to come downhill to hit the inside shoulder of the tight end in case it's a run, which would spill the ball outside to Bond. This allows him to maintain his leverage and easily cover the tight end and Rodgers' first read. Maybe someone faster than Mercedes Lewis wins on the intermediate crosser here, but still, nobody is open and the Packers have one of their gimme plays completely snuffed out, but that was just the beginning. Before we dive into how they shut down some of Devontae Adams' gimme plays, I want to thank this week's sponsor, The Ridge Wallet, which is far and away the best wallet I've ever used in my life. I've always struggled with having a wallet that's either way too bulky and sits like a lump in my pocket and hurts my back, or a wallet that's way too light, easy to lose, kind of flimsy, and doesn't really protect my valuables. Well, The Ridge Wallet is the best of both those worlds. It holds up to 12 different cards plus room for cash, so it holds everything you need, but is also really sleek and cool looking while also being incredibly sturdy since it's made out of titanium. If you are somehow strong enough to break this thing, which it's made out of titanium, so you won't, Ridge offers a lifetime warranty in case you do God knows what. The Ridge team is so confident you'll love this wallet, they'll let you try it out for 45 days and you can send it back for a full refund no questions asked. To buy the last wallet you'll ever need, all you gotta do is click the link in the description box below or use my coupon code Rollins, that's R-O-L-L-I-N-S, at checkout for 10% off your order. Now, let's get back to the show. The Saints played predominantly two high safety coverages, like most of the NFL is trending towards, and generally speaking, those two high coverages are designed to shut down the deep passing game and keep everything in front. 
One of the staples of Lafleur's offense, which works especially well against two high coverages, is the weak side choice concept, where against zone coverages like this one, Devontae Adams will be matched one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker since the nickel cornerback typically aligns to the strength of the formation. With the middle linebacker Demario Davis also pushing strong, and the outside cornerback Marshawn Lattimore focus on the outside receiver, it's basically Devontae Adams versus Quan Alexander. I'll take Devontae Adams. The Saints knew this would be coming, so they had Lattimore faint like he was playing the vertical, then quickly trigger when he saw what was going down. Well, when a corner is playing aggressive underneath, you have to punish him over the top. You have to hit them with a counter but the Saints were always one step ahead. Later in the game, the Packers are in a similar formation and the Saints in a similar coverage pre-snap. The Packers are again running weak side choice with a go and Rodgers is anticipating the whole shot between the corner and safety will come open, but that's what the Saints are ready for. They drop their corner into a zone bail technique and rush just three so Quan Alexander isn't left hanging out to dry. They understood all of the gimmies that the Packers had called over and over last season and designed an extremely specific game plan to stop each of them. Still, as there always is with Aaron Rodgers, there were some plays he made that only he and maybe one or two other guys can, which will defeat any coverage, any defender, period. The Saints played a lot of too high and a lot of man coverage, but were at times more focused on stopping the three-receiver trip side of the formation than Devontae Adams. Here they're in cover two man with two deep half safeties, but you can see PJ Williams is eyeing the three receiver side instead of worrying about playing over the top of Devontae. He's running this circus route, which inside releases then goes to the flag. And when Rodgers drops back, you can see him reading Williams' movement. If he hangs back over Devontae, Rodgers will throw to DeGuara on the basic, but when Williams is still focused on the trip side, Rodgers makes an incredible throw against outside leverage, mind you, which is just Rodgers being Rodgers. But surprisingly, that was one of the only times he made one of these special throws. Throughout the game, the Saints consistently stayed several steps ahead and were always out in front of whatever counter adjustments Rodgers and LaFleur tried to make. They played with a great understanding and anticipation of what the Packers were trying to do and what their answers would be to whatever was going to happen next. They're playing what Nick Saban refers to as cover seven, but we'll just call it quarters to keep it simple. Here it plays out very similarly to cover two man with the two deep half safeties. And again, Rodgers has Devontae isolated on the circus route and is anticipating the safety Marcus Williams is not going to let him win again. So on the other side, Rodgers and LaFleur dial up a two-high quarters beater called Mills, which is a dig post combo designed to high-low Malcolm Jenkins. As Rodgers takes the snap and sees Williams shading towards Adams, just like he planned, he knows he can go to the other side where Jenkins will be in conflict. He can either sit back on the post, which would open up the dig, or when Rodgers sees him dive on the dig, he knows the post has nobody besides the cornerback, but... Either Williams knew what was coming, is just really freaking good, or what's more likely, it's a combination of the two, cause the moment Rodgers comes off Adams thinking Williams is sticking with him, he wheels back to the post a la Ed Reed and makes an unbelievable play on the overthrow. There were a couple of things the Saints even borrowed from other teams, like using one of the two high safeties to cut a crosser against one of the Packers' favorite concepts, Mesh, which is designed to create natural rubs against man coverage so an underneath rattle spring free. But when a safety comes screaming down with leverage, bad things can happen. The Saints took a bit of a gamble here by actually playing with just one high safety, but identified Devontae as the crosser they were going to cut with Williams, and by the time Rodgers evaded pressure, he made an errant throw. Because Paulson Adebo could play in a trail technique, since he knew Williams was playing anything out in front, he was able to hang back a step and the ball fell right into his hands. In my opinion, this isn't so much on Rodgers, since after his first read Aaron Jones isn't open, he doesn't have the time to identify Williams cutting the crosser, cause instead, he has to deal with Cam Jordan torching the right guard. The Packers couldn't get their run game going whatsoever, which affected their play action concepts and all of the gimme plays they annihilated teams with just a year ago. This affected their execution on early downs which created much longer third downs and screwed up their ability to extend drives. I wouldn't say there are philosophical issues with LaFleur's scheme. It's proven to work. It worked really well last year, but a sound system by itself almost never works long term. You need to constantly develop new wrinkles off of that same system to keep things fresh, and that's what LaFleur failed to do in week one and in several of the meltdowns in the past. 
While this obviously isn't an ideal way for the Packers to start their season, all of us, including all of you cheeseheads watching, need to take a page from Aaron's book and R-E-L-A-X, there's still a lot of football left to go. While Rodgers didn't really look like himself after an interesting offseason, to put it mildly, he is still Aaron Rodgers and has rebounded from adversity far more intense than this. The Packers are a team that have gone to back-to-back -to -back NFC championships, and while they ultimately yielded disappointing results, that experience has taught the core members of this team what it takes to be successful in the playoffs. Adversity is preparation for greatness, and the Packers have still had massive success despite these occasional hiccups. Heading into Week 2, it's time for them to ask themselves, is that who we are, or is this just the thing to bring us together? Peace.